Alrighty, welcome back everybody. It is 7.17 p.m. September 26, 2017, and that is Eastern Time. We are following Tropical Storm Maria and almost Major Hurricane Lee. We are one mile an hour away from it being a Category 3, so it is still growing, really nothing in its way. Uh, once again, we are waiting for this front, the jet stream front, to pass over Texas, which it's currently doing, and making its way all the way to the East Coast, and then hopefully by tomorrow midday, maybe tomorrow night, we should start seeing Maria being pulled out to the ocean, but we are not seeing that quite yet. A few things I want to talk about here. We're going to touch on uh, Lee, um, obviously, Zombie Storm Lee, uh, rising from the dead, and now once again becoming a Cat 3 storm. At least it's about to be. We're talking one mile an hour away. It's a Cat 2 right now, 110 mile an hour winds. Uh, the pressure, I believe, is 973, 974, a little bit of a drop uh, from what I saw before. That may have changed, I'm not quite sure, but nonetheless, here we are. Um, now, as far as Maria goes, we are dealing with a 2-4 to four foot storm surge in these areas. Obviously, Cape Lookout all the way north up into Duck. Uh, the worst of it being, I want to say, this midpoint here by Hatteras and down to about this break in the bay here in uh, the uh, Outer Banks areas. And again, the reason for that, like we were talking about, uh, same situations with most most hurricanes when they get close to landfall or make landfall, tropical storm I should say, uh, is the counterclockwise spin. So basically what you're getting is you're getting that uh, the spin is causing the water to come in from the north and then wrap around this way. So obviously the areas of these northern outer banks, uh, all the way down, probably three quarters down to about this area, are getting that water pulled into them. And that's why we're seeing those videos of the the one and two foot storm surge flooding beach areas, which we did expect. We knew that would happen. That's why these warnings were issued for this area. Uh, there are uh, big wind gusts going on, so they're dealing with some pretty crappy weather right now. Um, there's no other way to put it. Uh, as far as the warnings go, they still have tropical storm warnings um, in a lot of deep areas into North Carolina, and then it extends a little bit into Virginia, certain areas that are close to the beach here. Um, but this is what we're dealing with right now as far as Maria goes. Uh, the worst of it more than likely being overnight tonight and uh, part of the day tomorrow. So the new, not so new, but the new Earth forecast is saying that uh, by tomorrow uh, into Thursday, we should start seeing that bend out into the ocean. And again, that's all based on the jet stream, um, which is being held up, again, uh, in part by uh, Tropical Storm at the time and then Tropical Depression, Pilar which is the reason we're getting all that rain in areas of Texas now. Uh, some of those um, projections were 8 to 10 inches of rain. I know some people were commenting in the video this morning that they are starting to see that rain. And again, that's from the jet stream pulling up all that water. And we're going to look at some of those charts now. Take a look. All right, I pulled up a water vapor chart for you, and I zoomed in a bit. I uh, changed the color to orange so we could see it a little better. It gives you a better idea of how you can see Maria, um, if not for the land that it's interacting with now, um, you wouldn't see this gap here. This gap here is being caused by its interaction with the land and also a mix of shear winds coming off the East Coast. We've talked about shear winds uh, many times on this channel. Uh, really quick, those are high, high altitude winds that are uh, basically considered global winds. They steer air currents and in turn they are capable of steering hurricanes. So these winds are coming off of the east coast and they're shearing this end of the storm and you can see Maria still trying to spin counterclockwise but as you notice these water vapor bands here once they get far enough away from that spin and that momentum they're getting pulled down very far south into this area. Now keep in mind, remember guys, this is warm water down here, warm temperatures, so naturally as this water vapor gets down in this area, according to the wind patterns here, it's getting warmer. And if you notice where it's going, it's being pulled south, and then it's looping back very far south, and then getting recycled into Lee. So in a way, guys, Maria is fueling Lee with warm uh, water vapor and precipitation, and that is aiding in Lee strengthening the way it is. Now that's one concern I have because it is strengthening this hurricane. We are one mile an hour away from a Category 3 storm. Lee is moving from east to west, guys. So uh, they did finally mention this storm on the Weather Channel again. Zombie Lee coming back from the dead and all that stuff. But this is my concern here. You can even see some of the water vapor from Lee 
that is uh, leaving that center vortex area, and once it gets far enough away, it can be manipulated by other winds, which is the same thing that's happening to Maria. We, we just talked about that, the, the uh, water vapor coming down in this area. Same thing happening with Lee. As the water vapor gets far enough away from the center of this hurricane, it's getting pulled down in this area. Now, once again, guys, the reason I brought this up in an earlier video is because the farther that Lee moves west and a tad bit south, if you notice, it starts above this grid line here, and as it's moving, it's starting to dip a little below, about halfway through. And I have... Where's the spaghetti model for Lee? Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. Uh, you can see Lee is still projected to um, f make its way to the west and a little bit southwest. Here's the current direction. If there was no winds, this is the pattern it would be heading in right here. So right to almost Lake Okeechobee in Florida. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is, once again, because I want to watch... Uh, these wind patterns here. Now, if Lee keeps moving west and we are still delayed with this front, which is why they project Maria to be up in this area by the time it actually gets turned out to the right, uh, possibly even by Friday, as late as Friday, we're talking another two full days of Hurricane Lee being able to freely move from east to west with a little bit of a dip south. So once it gets into this area where you see this water vapor being pulled down, that will in turn influence Lee to start moving south. And that's what my concern is because if Lee continues to move in this direction and then it's pushed south, I'm going to show you on a jet stream chart that the jet stream uh, loop that's coming down may not affect Lee. And it may leave Lee down in this area, and once that front passes through, we may be back to our normal western winds. And I have a wind chart pulled up. I thought I did. Here we go. Now, if you notice, the winds, we still have the winds coming off uh, the, the east side of the Atlantic, off West Africa, and they come down and they swoop down into the Lesser Antilles and the Leeward Islands and then way up into the Gulf of Mexico. That doesn't mean that's the path that Lee's going to take, but just to give you an idea of once Lee, if Lee, makes it far enough west to come down this way and it gets caught in this stream again and the front misses it, we could be dealing with another hurricane situation down in the Lesser Antilles and in, in towards Puerto Rico once again and Dominican Republic and so on and so forth. So that is why I'm bringing this to your attention, guys. It's important to understand these wind patterns. I always talk about the things that go on around these storms. So once again, just to recap everything really quick, if Lee continues to move west and gets caught up in this downdraft here, we could see Lee potentially, it's not guaranteed to happen, that's why I'm showing this to you, uh, things change, we all know that, but there is a potential for Lee to get caught up in this downdraft and push farther south. And the more south it goes, the more chance it has of missing our jet stream loop, which I'm going to show you here is projected to, this was... Um, this is almost right now, so you can see the, the U dips way down into Mexico and like this, and it's being hung up in this area, and that's in part due to uh, that, uh, that storm we just had, Tropical Storm uh, Pilar, and now there's still remnants of Pilar here, it's actually being pulled up through Texas right now, which is why Texas is getting that uh, possible 8 inches of rain in certain areas, but I'm going to move forward here. And you can see the U starts to pull up. We have a slight break in the jet stream. Um, that's one thing I was worried about. And as we move forward, you see the U reconnect up here, but we're talking way up in the northeast now. So although there is force, even though the U stops here, there is force down in this area. What the question is, is how far is Lee going to travel by the time we get to this point? Now this is projected to be about 60 hours from now, give or take. So a lot can change in that time, and again, guys, they predicted this jet stream to be not only at the East Coast already, but already pulling Maria out into the ocean, and we are just not seeing that yet. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen, it just means it's being very delayed because of our slow jet stream. Again, it had something to do with Pilar down here, uh, holding on to that front, and now the front is going to move from west to east, but just look how high it is in this graph. Now we're talking... Uh, three and a half days um, in the future is where they expect the jet stream to be. Now, by that time, Lee may be in this area right here where my mouse is. And if you notice these little arrows, these arrows are pointing down. Some of them are swooping around the southern tip of Florida. These are based on the global winds. So if Lee does make it in this direction, the influence is going to be pushing it downwards. Okay, And that's what we don't want to see. 
what we really wanted to see was this jet stream you'd be very deep even into Florida and that would create a giant wall here that would not only push out Maria which looks like it'll clearly be pulled out by this because Maria will be in this area at that time basically touching the jet stream you but if Lee is not parallel with Maria Lee is going to be less influenced by this jet stream that's just the way it works I'm not saying it's going to happen I'm just saying these are things to look out for and they are putting a little bit of focus on Lee again uh, more than likely because it's a Category 2, about to be a Category 3 storm. So, I'm going to show you one more chart I pulled up. And here it is. This is a little bit more of a detailed water vapor chart, which uh, shows a lot of uh, good information. It shows the higher densities of uh, water precipitation. You can see the remnants of Pilar here passing over Texas. Once again, that's why they're getting that rain. Look at those storms exploding there, guys. Those storms you see puffing up. And these as well. Now, this area I pointed out uh, yesterday, I believe, for being the more common area to form hurricanes in October. Now, this is backed up by uh, uh, some online articles from meteorologists and stuff like that, so you guys can find this stuff. Um, when we get into the month of October, um, it is, it's not totally uncommon to get hurricanes. We do have a lot of hurricanes that have formed in October, and the reason for it is because this becomes the warmest part of our ocean. Um, there is uh, temperature charts. I don't have that pulled up right now, but if any of you went and just Googled temperature charts, you would notice that the water here is super, super warm right now. And the reason I'm looking at this is because you see these storms exploding in this area. Now, clearly you can see the momentum is keeping them in a clockwise motion, which is the opposite of the tropical cyclones we deal with in the northern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere storms go counterclockwise. So that's a good thing, at least for this area for now, that we're seeing this clockwise movement. Now, the one thing that I'm concerned about are these strips of storms that are forming... Um, in this area right here that I have my mouse over because they seem to be going in a counterclockwise motion and if those are powerful enough to influence these storms we could be seeing another development of a storm down here in fact the GFS model and the Canadian models both showed a storm forming here in the next week so I'm gonna keep an eye on that but again the main focus right now obviously is what Maria is doing to the Outer Banks and then in turn what's gonna happen to Lee once it reaches this kinda area right here where my mouse is we can see once again that this uh, these patterns here are showing a southern dip. So again, we don't want Lee to get into this mess because what it's going to do is it's going to force Lee or at least influence it in this direction. And then once and if Lee gets down here, guys, we're dealing with a whole new ball game. We're dealing with warm water. We're dealing with very active precipitation. Just look at all the activity going on in this area. In fact, this chart here... Um, that I used before really shows what's going on. Just look at all the weather going on in our Caribbean right now. It's just wild. You can barely even see the land masses behind this stuff. So a lot of activity going on here. A lot of potential for storms. Believe it or not, this is this. Uh, we're still in hurricane season until November 30th. And again, I explained to you that in October, more times than not, these storms form right in the Caribbean just like Tropical Storm Franklin did right before Harvey. Tropical Storm Franklin formed right here, and then it went up into the Gulf, and then by the time we were even talking about it on TV, Harvey uh, became a, a major issue and a concern, so no one really talks about Franklin. But again, it's a perfect example to explain how storms form right in this area. So, basically guys, in conclusion, what we're dealing with here is another race against time, believe it or not, uh, we have Lee, almost a Category 3. It may be, by the time I even get this video uploaded, it may be a Category 3 storm. We just don't know. We're going to watch and see, but just focus on these wind patterns and just try to get a, a visual in your mind. Um, that's why I like to look at these charts. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes I'll sit and I'll stare at one of these loops for like 10 or 15 minutes straight just so my mind can... Uh, begin to memorize uh, the wind patterns at that current time. They're constantly changing from, you know, one hour to the next in some ways, but when you actually watch them and you focus on them and you let them, like, you know, get into your mind, you can kind of feel where this stuff is moving to. And just by the looks of it, guys, it's not, it doesn't take much to see this. Like, you see this downdraft here, and you also see parts of Lee being pulled down into it. So eventually Lee is going to be influenced by this more than it is right now. And that is because it's continuing to move west. And again, once that front wall gets here, how low is this storm going to be? How strong is it going to be? How much influence will it have? According to 
our jet stream map, this is where our jet stream is going to be. Now again, the force of it does go outside and lower than what you see here. Um, it's not just like this perfect line, even though that's what's been dividing hot and cold temperatures. It's almost like uh, a 20 minute drive, you're in 20 degree cooler weather. That's what it's been looking like with this uh, jet stream we've been dealing with, with the, the, uh, the heat wave going on in the northeast. So again, this is what our jet stream looks like. It's, it's going to come very high. Um, it's going to affect Maria, there's no doubt about it, because Maria is naturally moving north. It's going to get hit by this and pulled out. But again, where is Lee going to be at that time? Oh, man, I'm so sorry about that. Um, so that's what we're dealing with here now, guys. So I'm going to continue watching Lee. Um, I hope everyone in the Outer Banks is safe. I hope you guys are away from the beaches. That's the main concern right now. Um, hopefully Maria gets weaker and weaker as the night goes on. Uh, once again, the tonight is going to be the strongest part of Maria. At least that's what the stats say. That's what the data says. And that's where we're at right now. So, again, we are watching Lee. We are watching Maria. Uh, hopefully the end of Maria. But again, guys, Maria is beginning to fuel Lee. Lee is getting stronger. We don't want Lee to move any more south. But it looks to me that these currents will, in fact, push this storm south if we don't get this jet stream wall soon. So guys, that's where we're at right now. I appreciate you listening to me ramble on about these storms. I love this stuff. I hope everybody's safe, and we will talk very soon. Thank you all.